I'm here to talk about multimodal interaction with smart appliances and, and smartphones. So um, it's actually basically two projects. So the first project is about talking with smart appliances, switches, uh, with only a microphone array. And the second one is about talking with smartphone uh, for switching between apps. So let's start with the first one. Um, how do we talk with smart, uh, why, do we, why do we want to talk with smart, smart appliances? So um, this is my home in China, and uh, I spent a lot of time last holiday season to configure every single one of those lights to be a smart light, and then I put a bunch of home pods so that they can, uh, my parents can interact with it. But um, their biggest concern is how do they remember what's the name of each one of those lights? It's, it's weird, right? Like, you can call maybe the, one of them ceiling lights, but do you call one of them like left wall light or something? This is actually what I do in my home. I, I sort of remember them, but like it's really hard, and it's definitely not for everyone. The question is how do we refer to each one of them? And so my idea is basically just talk to appliances, talk to your switches. If you, like, if, if, if the switch is another per person, you can just talk to him and he will know you are talking to him instead of anyone else. So why don't we just talk to him? So this is basically the project. Let's see if the sound works. So see, I'm talking to the light, and I say turn on this light, and the light I was talking towards will turn on. All of, the, all of this is done only with a microphone array, which is similar, that is a similar microphone array that embedded in all of the smart speakers that you have at home. So let's see how do we achieve this. This is what the, uh, the microphone array receives. Uh, basically, it's raw audio data. It actually, uh, a lot of audio data, because it has multiple microphones. Traditionally, it was used to, um, ampl uh, to, to do something like beamforming so that they can be aligned together to amplify the strength of the signal to noise. But the thing is, with this alignment, they just dump out all the alignment and details in individual soundtracks. So on the other hand, what we are doing is we feed this raw audio into a neural network, and then we output the head position and orientation of the user. So this seems really simple. Why doesn't the prior work just do this, right? Why, do, why, like, why doesn't every industry people is doing this? So um, the, we, we go through a bunch of related works, and then it seems like their model is not accurate enough. Um, for example, the best model we can find is 0.5 uh, meters in positional error, and the 44 degrees is achieved with multiple microphone arrays, not even one microphone array. And the only person short input, while their results shows long, longer input will have better accuracy, but longer input also increased latency. And they usually, their model usually only outputs either position or, or rotation, and obviously multitask learning is really beneficial, so um, we, like a better model should uh, try to uh, produce both, and then like it's beneficial for both of them if we train for both of them. And the reason behind all of this is because they, there's lack of data. There is very little data of um, you both have the microphone array data and the pre precise position and direction of the user. Um, the best part of work only have 900 seconds of hand labeled data. So the question came down to how do we collect data? And prior work basically they, uh, they, they collect the raw audio using microphone array, that's pretty obvious, and then they collect head position orientation by a hand labeled data. So they have a um, video camera and then they hand label data using mechanical Turk or something. This is time consuming and really inaccurate. So what Sounder do is we basically use a VR data collection pipeline. What we do is we build a VR application that guide the user to move around in a room in a very evenly distributed way. And then we use, uh, similarly we use a microphone array to collect raw audio, and then we use, since VR has way better accuracy in terms of head tracking, we just use that as a ground truth. And this is kind of how it works. So the VR application shows a triangle which you are trying to align yourself with that triangle and then that will uh, align, guide you to a different position. And this is me doing the data collection. Uh, we can do this like for 30 minutes and so, and then we, we keep on having the very accurate um, positional tracking data throughout that time. So eventually we collect 751 minutes of training data, which is 50 times the prior work. This is only with three months of me working on this project. So you can imagine if this in like an industry setting, you can collect way more data than like any prior work and get even better model. So our machine learning model looks like this. We ha this is similar to prior work. We have a, a few layers of convolution neural network uh, to process the raw signal. And um, with this, you can only get pretty poor results. As I said, like a convolutional neural network can only have limited uh, input, so like the, the input is limited to a certain length. 
and we want to extend it to arbitrary length, so we append the LSTM after that. Basically, this LSTM layer is, um, is processing um, the data from, uh, from, from this current uh, uh, input and also from all the prior input, basically using that to make the um, signal a little bit uh, more stable. And also, um, our model output, uh, both position orientation, and, and also we add an extra thing called confidence because we find out during different part of our speech, our accuracy, is a little, our accuracy is actually a little bit different. So we make our model out output a confidence so that it will output higher confidence when you are speaking something that make it, uh, that the system think, I, I definitely know where you are, and sometimes it, when the system doesn't really know where you are, it will output a little bit lower confidence. So that after you speak a, cer a certain command, we can do a weighted average to get the most accurate result. And this is kind of uh, how it works in life. So the right part shows uh, the prediction result of the model. You can see the position and also the direction of the output. And by the way, this is actually like a worst case kind of for our system because I'm exactly facing a towards the other direction of the smartphone array. The system actually performs a little bit better if I'm speaking towards the smartphone array. Um, the reason I do that is just because I can show myself and the smartphone array at the same time. So you, you see it's almost like I can get 100% at turning on the light, kind of. This is basically five lights in a room. And uh, we can get uh, average position accuracy around 0 0.3 meters and average, average rotation accuracy to 33 degrees. Okay, yeah, so um, next up, um, let's talk about smartphone. Uh, my other project, this is an ongoing project, so it's pretty uh, experimental. Um, well, so um, with smartphone, uh, I think one of the biggest problems we identify is context switching. So for example, in this case, I am uh, texting um, another person about my mom's uh, phone number because I want uh, my mom to be able to pick up that person. So usually what we do, what do we do? Like I don't remember my mom's exact phone, uh, phone number, I let my phone recognize, uh, remember it. So what I do is I will open my contact app, search for my mom, copy her phone address, switch back to this um, email um, a, a client, and then paste it there, right? Or we can use virtual assistant. We ask virtual assistant, what's my mom's uh, phone number, um, memorize it, and then just put it in the mail client. This is both really weird. Why can't we just let virtual assistant do it? So this is what I imagine we will do it in the future. We tap on the screen and says, insert my mom's phone, phone number here. And virtual assistant just does it for me and put the phone um, number in the text box. So um, here what we are basically doing is we ask the virtual assistant to copy information from another app. And we use uh, our finger to specify where we want the information to be put. Um, so this is basically, you naturally describe the information you want and you don't need to leave the current GUI context. And similarly, you can also um, get the information in your current app to another app. For example, in this case, uh, my friends text me an address, and I just want to know, um, uh, show me the direction there, or how long does it take to get there, um, is the traffic bad there, or show me a picture around that place, or put that in the notes. There's a bunch of stuff I can do. I don't, I don't want to um, do them manually. I, I just want, because the information is already there, I just want to specify that I want to execute a certain voice command with that um, uh, com uh, information on screen, right? So it's actually really easy to implement um, in Element. So um, the harder part is actually in the accessibility API. I need to figure out a way to get the information from the screen or, um, or actually manipulate the content on the screen a little bit. But implement in the smart assistant is really easy. We just, um, I basically add two constructs into ThinkTalk. One of them um, basically get a selection on the screen, get the information that I selected on the screen. The other one um, allows me to output information. So um, element will, um, after a, a command is executed, it will, um, it will give me some result. And then the second command allow me to put that result back onto the screen. And we use uh, accessibility API on Android to acquire and change user content. Without further ado, let's start a demo. So um, here, um, my friend is asking me um, to go to a dinner sometime. So, um, well, I'm staying with my mom, but um, I don't actually remember my mom's exact address. So what should I do? Insert so I click on the tax box, here. and then I say insert my mom's address here. And then he populates my address and uh, my mom's address and put it there. So I can just send, and then it will be sent. Uh, she lives at 425 uh, Grand Avenue, Palo Alto. Well, this is just for exemplary 
um, reasons, don't go to that address. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, now my friend says, I know a place nearby and this is the restaurant. I don't know how to pronounce that name, right? And I, I still want to know whether that's a good restaurant, I never heard of it. So what should I do? Should I copy it and go to Yelp? Well, there's an easier way. Well, here we go. Um, well, this is not good enough for my center. Let's go to the best place in Palo Alto. Well, should I go to Yelp again and search for the best place? Well, why don't we just do this? I tap on the text box again to indicate where do I want to insert it. In Palo Alto, here. By the way, those are like the latest feature that Slate just talked about in this morning, which is querying a um, database. And pretty easy, right? So this is how virtual assistant with multimodal interaction can facilitate our um, everyday life with a smartphone. So that's all, and uh, I'm happy to take any question. What was the hardest part about building the demo? Uh, which one? hardest part about uh, orchestrating the demo? The, the demo previously? Um, we have some trouble training both of my constructs and they're like, like basically the language model part is kind of weird because like, I think it's just, it depends on tuning because I build myself separately and he built himself separately and it's really hard to merge them together. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise. Yeah, and actually, I want to talk about the other thing, which is the first demo, which is the, um, the talk to a smart appliances demo. The hardest part is actually get the voice-to-text working. Whereas in Google's voice-to-text, it doesn't work very well. Maybe I should try Microsoft.